Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present the Honorable Grace Van Owen, new partner at Mackenzie Brackman Cheney. Hey. All right. How long have you been a Bears fan, sir? I grew up in Chicago. I've been a Bears fan all my life. I mean, it killed me when I got transferred out here. And you continued being a Bears fan even after you moved to Los Angeles, did you not? Yeah. This year, I got the satellite dish so I could watch them. I also got season tickets. Season tickets? Now, why would you do that, sir, living in Los Angeles? Because season ticket holders get first crack at Super Bowl tickets, and that's where they said they were headed. The defendant said that? Yeah. They compared them to the 85 team, and that's why I spent four grand for the dish. And what do I get? Six and ten. Preseason optimism is typical of every team in pro sports, isn't it? If they don't play up to potential, that's one thing. It's part of the game. I can accept this. This is a fact. But when you lie, when you tell loyal fans you're going to have team speed on defense when your own stopwatches tell you different, when you puff up your offense all the while you're getting ready to trade your only quarterback with experience, then you're falsely advertising your product. That's what they did, and that's why I want my money back. I have nothing further. You're not just suing for your money back, are you, Mr. Lewis? You're also claiming emotional distress. They lost to Tampa Bay. Twice. You're tying up the courts, a judge, a clerk, because you don't like the way a team played football. I spent money. And then watching their games caused me to have a blood pressure condition. The Chicago Bears did this? Yeah. Ask the doctors they did this. When they lied, saying they were good, it set me up. At the time those claims were made, they thought they were good. Baloney. They had lousy secondary. They couldn't even shut down. The secondary was fine until Dan Hampton tore his knee apart. Isn't that correct, sir? Dan Hampton is a lineman, lady, not a cornerback. But with him out, the line couldn't mount a legitimate pass rush, which left the secondary overexposed. You can't blame it all on the pass rush. No, that's right. You can't blame it all on the pass rush. What you can blame it on is unforeseeable injuries. They didn't lose anybody big. They lost Donnell Wolford in the second game. Armstrong sprained his ankle against Tampa Bay. Morrissey suffered a lacerated kidney and had to miss the whole season. Come on, they had all their big guys except for Hampton. The truth is they considered it a rebuilding year. They traded McMahon for draft picks. They totally wrote off this year and they didn't tell us. You are not a shareholder, Mr. Lewis. You are just a fan. I'm a Chicago Bears fan. You want to screw with people? Go ahead. But you don't screw with a Chicago Bears fan. Not today, not ever. As head of the Chicago Bears public relations staff, do you feel that you made false representations concerning your team's potential? No, of course not. We thought we had a legitimate shot at the Central Division. And without a few costly turnovers and key games, we would have made it. Thank you, sir. I have nothing further. Six and ten. You stank, didn't you? It was a disappointing season. I have statements made by you to the press in August. Man for man, this is a better team than the 85 club that won the Super Bowl. I was a little optimistic. Yes, well, what's interesting is what you said to the press after you lost to Cleveland on October 23rd. We always considered this a rebuilding year. You said that, didn't you? Yes, I did. So you claimed to have a team that you could send to the Super Bowl when in reality you knew you had a team in need of rebuilding. I'd call that a little wishful thinking, that's all. I'd call that fraud. I'm telling you we've got a problem. You can't be serious. We've got a shot at proving a false claim here. What's more, if he gets a season ticket refund, he could suddenly be faced with 35,000 more claims from all your other fans. Are you telling me that this coup can win? I am telling you we can't just laugh this away. I've got to put on a better defense here. I'm going to have to call another witness. I don't know. Somebody who can convince the judge that this 6 and 10 season wasn't foreseeable. What about this Ditka guy? Would he be able to do it? Mike Ditka? Well, he's the coach. Couldn't he talk about what went wrong? Oh, yeah. He can talk. Fly him out here. I'm going to put him on. You're going to put Mike Ditka on the stand? Have him in court by 10 in the morning and tell him to wear a tie. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please state your name for the record, sir. Mike Ditka. And your occupation? Head coach of the Chicago Bears. Sir, Mr. Lewis claims that members of your franchise publicly predicted a successful season when you knew it would be a failure. Well, that's wrong, because I, I said it. I really believe we were going to have a good season. 
Well, what went wrong? Well, injuries, mostly. Uh, we had a lot of people hurt on defense. We had 23 different starters. Only two of our regulars started all 16 games. And that was totally unpredictable at the beginning of the season. So at the time you forecasted success, you really believed you'd be a good team. Well, we were a good team. We opened with four victories against Cincinnati, Minnesota, Philadelphia, and Detroit. And you can't beat teams of that caliber unless you're a pretty darn good football team. Thank you, sir. I believe I have nothing further. So... You were full of promise at the start, full of genuine confidence, is that right? Yes, I was. And yet, as early as the sixth week of play, while you still had a winning record, you went on record as saying that this fine team of yours was probably incapable of winning another football game, didn't you? I said that. You knew. If you could make a statement like that when the team was above 500, then you had to know in your bones that this was one lousy football Objection. team. Objection. Overruled. And after the Washington game, you said it again. What I said was... We're an atrocious football team. I remember that. Finish your quarter. also said I fooled myself. Well, why weren't you honest from the start? Ooh, hey, buddy, you ever coach? Mr. Duncan. I can coach. Let me Mr. coach. Lewis. How do you trade McMahon? Jackson. Oh, come on, for I God's sake. I mean, he's the sake. best quarterback in the league. He unloads him to San You're Diego. Trade, That's, That's, not right. That's enough. That's enough. nothing in San Diego. Move to strike. Hey, buddy, you think you know football? Mr. Ditka. Excuse me. But I'm getting sick and tired of getting letters and complaints from armchair quarterbacks who know nothing about winning. I move that this witness be held in contempt. Hey, I'm talking, Mr. Kempel. And winning is having a conviction. You have what it takes to go all the way. Unresponsive mistrial. If you're going to sue us for that, if that's the kind of fan you are, then maybe you ought to move to New England and cheer for the Patriots. All right, let's have the lawyers and the parties approach. You too, Mr. Ditka. Now, as much as I've thoroughly enjoyed this trial, given the backlog on my docket, I don't think we should take up any more time with it. I think we have a bona fide cause of action, Judge. Mr. Kumpel, I don't think there was anything willful or negligent in the defendant's conduct. Although I uh, believe it was a mistake to trade McMahon, given the relative Ditka. insecurity Shh. of the back situation. Mr. Lewis. You'd be willing to drop your claims in exchange for an opportunity to fully air your grievances with Mr. Ditka? Yeah. What? He has to listen, right? He has to listen, and you get him for three hours. You gotta be kidding. No, I'm not kidding. The only alternative to settling is to play this thing to a verdict. And you might not like what I have to say, sir, given the fact that I'm from New England originally, and I'm a very big Patriots fan. We accept the settlement, Your Honor. We're adjourned. Hey, Mike. Can I call you Mike? No. Let's start with special teams. 